Suna Baba, protectors of the Suna. Suna Baba, protectors of the Suna. Alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. Welcome to another session of the Sunnah Followers Hadith class. And we are studying the Hadith from Riyadh al-Salihin. Uh, we're in the book of prohibitions. These are all Hadiths addressing how certain things in Islam are forbidden. Things in regards to our manners, our character, as well as worship of Allah. So let's put the chapter on the screen for today. Today we're going to speak about hadiths that relate to um, uh, dealing with magic, soothsaying, tarot card reading, astrology. All of these things are forbidden for us as Muslims. Let's look at the first hadith, which is narrated by Aisha, the wife of the prophet. She said, some people came and asked the prophet about soothsayers. He said, they are of no good. And upon this, they said to him, O prophet of Allah, but they make true predictions sometimes. The prophet then said, that is a word pertaining to truth, which a jinn steals from the angels and then whispers into the ears of his friend, the soothsayer, who will then mix more than a hundred lies with it. And this is here we can see Something that I try to really emphasize with you guys, Islam is such a beautiful way of life. Our religion is complete. No one can come and change anything. There's no need to write books about it. Allah has addressed everything. A lot of Muslims come today and say, Sister Layla, how is it that I can go to a fortune teller or I can go to a psychic person? In fact, just recently, I had a person call me and say how they went to see um, that famous uh, psychic lady that's on TV. She came to the state that I live in, and she had a booking at the, uh, in Cleveland, and they went um, and saw her live performance. And they were talking about how amazing it was, how she was able to go to people in the audience who she never knew. And, and tell them, you know, things about themselves that only they would know. So she's like, they were like, how does she know this? Well, Islam tells us she's talking, communicating with her personal jinn, who in turn is communicating with your jinn. People who deal with soothsaying, tarot card reading, astrology, and the likes, these are people who make a contract with shaitan. They get all their information from that, their personal gen. When they come to you, your gen will start communicating to his or her gen, telling them when she was six years old, her mother died. When she was 10 years old, she had a nervous breakdown. When she was 12, she was in jail. When she was married to her first husband, he did this to her. They start talking real fast to her gen, telling her gen what, her jinn needs to know about you. And in turn, her jinn whispers to her. And that's why when you look at her on TV, she's always doing this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. She's moving her head to the side. Her jinn is whispering in her ear the information, but she'll tell you. In fact, in an interview I saw her do for 2020, she told them, I really hear what, the, the, what about the person. If I go to an event and I walk up to that person, the, it whispers in my ear. She says, I will hear a voice in my ear that will tell me this person's mother died. This person's mother did this. She said, and I, the voices, I don't know where the voices come from, but I hear it and in my ear. And that is why I'm doing this. Well, she doesn't know because she's an unbeliever that those voices that voice that she hears is not the voice of the deceased person's mother. It's not the voice of the deceased person's father. It's the voice of her gen. 
but by them not knowing about a law, they don't understand that those voices that she hears are her personal gen telling her the information that she gets from them. And I was watching her on a TV and she was saying, they asked her, how, how do you, what, what does it sound like? She said, sometimes it's a lot of words garbled together. She said, like their whole life story is being told to me. Well, that's the gen because that person's gen is quickly telling them this happened, that happened, this happened. He's communicating. This happened, that happened, this happened. So she says, sometimes she's like this, who, who, trying to, you know, repeat it all, trying to keep up with the voice to repeat it. Well, she doesn't know that's her personal gene, okay? So that is how a psychic, it's not that a law has a connection with them and it's not that they have a connection with the deceased. The connection that they have is with their own personal gene who has connected to the other person's gene and is sharing that information. And that's what the prophet meant when he said, when he answered the question, the people said, how is it that they know this? And then in other occasions, the jinn, there's jinn that sit out underneath the lowest heaven. There's jinn that, jinn that sit underneath the lowest heaven. They eavesdrop. They eavesdrop into the conversations of the angels and Allah will send a meteorite to knock them down. But they take what they heard the angels speaking about and mix falsehood with it and go back and tell the, your jinn. And your jinn tells you, and in turn, you can say on November 26, there will be an earthquake in Los Angeles. That information came from your jinn who heard it from another jinn. And so this is what the prophet is saying. No one has a, a knowledge of the future except the law. But the jinn listen in to the angels. They eavesdrop and come back and mix truth with falsehood and in turn share that with people who are stupid enough to call upon them. Okay? And there again, the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said the angels descend in the clouds and they talk about things that has been decreed in heaven. Shaitan steals what they say and communicates it to the soothsayer who tells it along with other lies. So there, that's how it happens. That's how an astrologer, a soothsayer, a fortune teller, a psychic, that's how they get their information. Also, we have another hadith where as Sophia, who was the daughter of Abu Ubay, she tells us on the authority of some of the wise of the prophet that the prophet said, whoever goes to a person who claims to, to know about matters of the unseen and you believe that person, then your prayers will not be accepted for 40 days. That's why I tell you guys, even on Facebook, do not play those astrology games. Do not play those fortune telling games because, you know, again, we have to be careful. If you believe what that astrologist says, or if you believe what that fortune teller says, Allah is not going to accept your prayers for 40 days. Okay. So we can't even deal with that. Not even out of fun. Be careful of that. Also the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the practice of interpretation, interpretation of omens based on how a bird flies and the practice of divination by drawing lines on the ground and the taking of, of evil omens are all practices of disbelief. Of, of these are all examples of magic. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that it's the nature of the human being to be superstitious. But we as Muslims are going to have to work on that. We're going to have to stay away from superstition. Just because you broke a piece of glass does not mean you're gonna have bad luck. Just because you stepped on a crack doesn't mean you're gonna break your back. 
You know, we have to stop being so superstitious. We have to stop being so quick to blame everything that happens to us in life that's bad on magic. Somebody gave me the evil eyes. Somebody did magic on me because I'm having problems in life. We have to stop doing that. Your personal gen wants you to be superstitious. Superstitious. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever acquires a branch of knowledge dealing with numerology or astrology, this is learning a type of magic. So that's why we don't deal with astrology. We had a brother come into our website a couple of weeks ago. He'll probably come back after a couple of months. And he was sitting in here trying to ask the women of this website what our zodiac signs were. He wanted to know what month were we born? And none of us gave the answer because we knew what he was fishing for. He wanted to know what your zodiac sign was so he could then tell you Think about yourself. You know, this is a form of magic. We do not deal with astrology. We do not deal with horoscopes. We do not deal with that. Astronomy is okay. Astronomy is the study of space. There's nothing wrong with studying the stars, the moons, you know, and all that. But astrology, this is based on zodiac signs and all of that. The Chinese have their signs. You know, we have our signs here in America. The Indians have their signs and all of that. This stuff is haram. This is a form of magic. People who deal in this are nothing but sorcerers. The same with tarot card readers. And unfortunately, you can travel throughout the Muslim world, especially through Egypt and even Saudi Arabia. You'll find a lot of women and men who specialize in tarot card reading. These are witches. They're sorcerers. This is haram. This invalidates your belief in a law. We cannot do that, guys. This is also another reason why we have to be careful with that dream stuff too. Yes, it's true. There are some people who Allah has given the ability to interpret dreams, but we don't know who those people are for real. It could be a person that calls himself a dream interpreter, but he's just a sorceress who is contracted out to the jinn. Okay, so this is why we don't do that. We have to be careful. We have to do what the prophet said do. If you have a good dream, enjoy it. If you have a bad dream, seek refuge from it. As far as trying to interpret the meaning of it, leave it alone. Because you're opening the door to something that could be evil and hurtful for you. Remember, Allah tells us in the Quran to stay away from evil to not put ourselves in a situation that could lead to evil. So this is why when you guys asked that question about dream interpretation of that book written by uh, that person, this is why Sheikh Morsi said, throw it away. And this is why I said it too, because you're opening the door to something that can end up turning into something very bad for you. Once you open the door to Shaitan, there's no coming back guys or it's hard to come back because shaitan inspires just like Allah does. And you don't know if your inspirations are coming from Allah or shaitan. And it's hard. You would think that Allah is inspiring you to interpret dreams and to say things when in reality, it could be shaitan. That happened here at this website. There was a brother here at this website. He thought he could get a dream interpreted. Has you guys seen him back here since? It's been a while. I've never seen that brother back here since. So we have to be careful, guys, playing around with the unknown. You know, this is an old saying, an old Creole saying, my mother's Creole. And one of the old Creole sayings she used to tell me is don't open the door to the unknown. Don't play around with the unknown. Stay away from paranormal. 
You know, you open a door, it's going to be hard to close. And that is so true. You hear a lot of people from Louisiana saying that. And it's true. You know, subhanAllah. Allah. So again, stay away from tarot card reading. Stay away from, from um, tarot card, all, including dream interpretation. Just do what uh, the prophet said do. Simply enjoy the dream if it was good. It was a, a, a dream from Allah. If it was bad, I'udu balahi and move on. Let's look at the next hadith. Muawiyah ibn al-Hakam tells us that he said to the prophet, O prophet of Allah, I have recently emerged from ignorance. <clears throat> Allah has favored me with Islam. In other words, Allah has, has caused me to convert to Islam. He said, but there are still some men amongst us who go to visit soothsayers. They consult with them about matters relating to the future. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do not sit with those men, do not visit with them. And so I said to the Prophet, but there are some men who are guided by these omens. The Prophet said, these are the ideas which come up in their minds, but you should not be influenced by these things. These things should not, you, and it should not prevent you from pursuing your work, your, your endeavors. And then he said, I said to the prophet, there are also some men who practice divination by drawing lines on the ground. The prophet said, there was a prophet who came before me who drew lines. The line which agrees with the line drawn by that prophet would be correct. In other words, here what the prophet is saying is, again, Allah only gives knowledge. He will only share knowledge of the future, knowledge of the unseen with the prophet. He does not share this knowledge of the unseen with anyone else. There will be no prophets after the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So this is why the prophet was telling him, be careful going to these soothsayers. Be careful uh, dealing with omens and stuff. Because Allah does not share his knowledge of the unseen with anyone unless it's a prophet. And that's why I'm telling you guys, stay away from this. As my mother would say, keep the door to the unknown closed. Don't open that door. Do you guys find it a, a, a mystery why that brother has not been to this website since? How many of you noticed that? I have, subhanAllah. Okay, let's see what else here is here. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, here's the hadith that a couple of sisters was looking for the other day in our Zoom room. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has forbidden the price of a dog, the earning of a prostitute, and the money given to a soothsayer. In other words, it is forbidden to sell and buy dogs. It is also forbidden to sell and buy a woman for prostitution. And it is also forbidden to give money to a fortune teller, a psychic person. And also, guys, another hadith, it's also forbidden to buy and sell cats. Because a lot of people ask me, Sister Layla, can we buy a cat? No. All my cats are thoroughbred. I didn't buy them. I adopted them. If you want a beautiful pedigree cat, you can get a pedigree cat. There's a millions of them. Go to your, your local animal uh, uh, adoption agency and you can be on a wait list for a Maine Coon or a Turkish Angora like Karen. You guys like to let, you don't see him much now because my granddaughter's here and he hangs out with her. Uh, Karen, I don't even see him no more. He's nowhere around me. He's hanging out need for her. That's his girl. You know, but you can get a, a cat like Karen. He's a thoroughbred Turkish, uh, Turkish Angora. Pure bread. I had wait. I was on a list to adopt him. It only took a year, because some places will even breed him, and then you'd have you adopt him. So, you, but we cannot buy a cat. We cannot sell a cat. We cannot buy a dog. Sell a dog. Okay. You can adopt for people who are farmers. You can adopt a sheep dog. You can adopt a hunting dog. If you need a dog to go hunting with. 
And these animal adoption places, they are overloaded with animals. So there's no need to pay money for them. Go and adopt. You can adopt a Doman Pincher. You can adopt a German Shepherd if you need a guard dog. Okay. So Alhamdulillah, these are all, oh, I think the next chapter I wanted to do too. Okay. But these are all uh, hadiths addressing the prohibition of uh, tarot card reading, soothsayer, all that type of stuff. These are all forms of magic. And also I want to do the next chapter because this chapter speaks about superstition. Look at what the prophet said. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, not the transmission of disease of one person to another is a bad omen. But I am pleased with good omens. And what is a good omen? A good kind word. Now, back in that days, uh, the Arabs were, uh, and still are, the Arabs are very superstitious people. If a person would get sick with a disease, they used to think this is a sign. This is a bad omen. This is a sign that something bad is about to happen. Well, the prophet said a sickness is not a sign that something bad is going to happen. And if there is any good omens, a kind word is a good omen. A kind word is something good. You know, but he used to, he had to teach the Arabs that just because a person is sick, that's not an omen. It's not a curse. That's not a sign of Allah's anger or that you're, you're cursed. Your family has been cursed. We have to stop being so superstitious. Also, in another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, just because an affection occurs, that is not an evil omen. If there's anything that would be a source of trouble, it would be a house, a horse, or a woman. This is another hadith that many Muslims misconstrue the meaning of. Again, back in those times, and still today still, if a, if a person is sick with a disease or a whatever, oh, that's a sign, a bad sign from God that something, that your family is cursed. Something's about to happen, you, your family is cursed. If a child was born with a disability, oh, that means your family is cursed. If a, if a person gets a disease that your family is cursed, the prophet said, no, that's not true. If there was a curse in anything, it would be a house. Because when you buy a house, you don't know what you're getting. The house could appear to be fine. And then you find out it has a bad foundation or a hearse, a horse. Because you can buy a horse thinking that this horse is fast and good, but then you take the horse home, you find out the horse is stubborn. It won't run. You can't make it work or do anything. Or if there were to be a bad omen, it would be in a woman because a woman can appear to be the most beautiful, beautiful creation on earth. Get her home and she has nasty manners, bad manners. Okay. So in other words, what the prophet is saying is stop being so superstitious. Stop going around looking for bad omens. Just because a person is sick does not mean the family is cursed. Just because a child is born with a disability doesn't mean that that, that, that family is cursed. Just because a person has epilepsy doesn't mean that the family, uh, this is a punishment from a law for that family. Okay. And we still have people to this day who believe in this type of stuff. The developmentally disabled are uh, treated so badly and their families are looked upon as being cursed. Okay. Uh, in this last hadith, uh, one of the companions said, when talking about superstition or omens was, was mentioned in the presence of the prophet, he would tell the people the best omen is the good ones. He said a Muslim should, should not refrain from anything because of an omen. Because there's an old, you should not say that I'm not going to go traveling because uh, the fact that the birds uh, chirped from the right means that that's a bad sign. He said, do not allow omens to uh, interfere with your plans to travel or do anything. He said, instead, if something happens that you don't like, just say, oh, Allah, you alone is the bringer of good. 
oh Allah, only you can stop evil. And oh Allah, there is no power or might except in you. So that's how the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught the Arabs to deal with superstitious things. There is nothing can harm you. Nothing can benefit you unless Allah decrees it. If you got plans to go out of town tomorrow just because you broke a piece of glass, don't take that as an omen to not do it. Carry on and do it and say, oh Allah, nothing can harm, nothing can benefit unless you allow it. There is no power, there is no might except in you, Allah. So I hope we walk away from this class learning to stay away from magic. Stay away from the unseen. Only Allah has future. I mean, has knowledge of the future and knowledge of the unseen. Do not open the door of the unknown because it's a hard door to close back. And learn to trust in Allah and seek his protection. Don't be quick to think that the things around you can harm or benefit you. On that note, we'll stop right here. If you guys have any questions or comments, inshallah, type them on the screen. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika.